Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about architecture. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how would you describe the most complex architecture that you have designed if asked to explain it in three minutes in an interview, especially if you are a slow speaker? So I would start by explaining the problem first and then explain how I thought a good solution could look based on that problem. That is the way I would say go basically. Uh, this is a little bit fluffy but if you're a slow speaker it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day the, if you have three minutes to explain it then the, the, either the person who's doing the interview is an idiot or they're going to be able to figure out based on you just talking based on like you starting within those three minutes whether or not you know your stuff or not it's not a race who, who because then if it's you if you have three minutes and you're supposed to end your entire explanation within those three minutes then you're sort of then it's not about then it's like a race or a competition in how good of a communicator are you and I've never seen a technical interview where that was the case that's for damn sure so the way that I would go about this is as I said I, I would start by explaining the problem because the thing that a lot of uh, well in this case it's architecture what architecture is in essence is a combination of having technical knowledge having business domain knowledge and communication skills it's like a, it's a trifecta of these things and the reason why this is like this is what most architects actually do they're trying to model a problem within the business domain in a technical format so that we can implement it and actually create a good solution but in order for them to do that they need to be able to communicate with the people who actually have the problem if that makes sense they're sort of it's in a sense it's the they're the bridge between the engineering part of the company and the business and like all the other like uh, areas of the company so they're usually very high level and architecture at its core is a very similar sort of thing. You can have high level architecture and you can have low level architecture, but it always starts with the same thing. You have a problem. And that problem is the thing that decides what architecture you should go with. And if you don't start by explaining the problem that you have or like sort of motive, like building up that context, then, you, I mean, then, then architecture is pointless because how would you know what to what type of strategy technical strategy to pick if you don't know what you're dealing with so uh, i like to say that the best way is to talk from experience and you pick a problem that you try to describe that you faced in the fa in the past an example would be if I, I if i were to try to answer this specific question i would go something along the lines where so the most complicated thing that i've probably done i have a few choices to pick between let's pick something that's fairly recent uh, so I was working for a fairly big company and one of their key pain points was that the time that they took for them to uh, process orders for their products was way 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 too high and they estimated that if because they were going through a scale up if they're going to move more of their business online and deal with larger quantities of orders they are going to have to staff up their internal staff like all their support staff and so forth that handle orders and customers and so forth by a lot of people and they figured that that's not going to be sustainable so what they wanted to do first before they had that problem is to look at a more streamlined software solution to see if they could improve the ratio of people they have to hire because most of their internal processes were very manual at this point so what I did was basically that I went on interviews with the different stakeholders across the company so I figured so we set up some basic KPIs for sort of like what are measurements we are looking for and an example would have been all right from the point that an order comes in until it's delivered that time we want to reduce that as much as humanly possible so that gives us some type of very high level frame for when we're going to do the, uh, how, how we're going to measure improvements and then we have to segment and basically map up the map out all the steps in order to measure each individual thing because some stuff is maybe 
unfortunately not possible to streamline because wait times and so forth on third parties etc etc might be very difficult to affect but technical solutions that we have internally whole different story so we start looking into the, uh, the uh, different uh, departments that are part of this process and we figure out that one of the things that is taking so much time that is actually the, the manual part is that they have a very broad ecosystem of different systems that all the different uh, people have to use. They might have 15 systems where they move like data from one system to another manually because these systems they are not in con interconnected in any way. And so a pattern started appearing which is the, uh, that the essence of the problem is that there's a fragmented ecosystem where the data is stored in all kinds of places from in third-party systems and so forth and so forth. So the solution that we came up with was that basically we would have to start moving the all this fragmented data into domains within our company. Uh, microservices was the way we choose to do that. So we created a base layer of APIs, which was like, imagine a very thin layer on top of a database. No, it's not a database, but it's an API on top of that so that the teams could control like access and so forth over a network. And so once we did that, the data sources were all sort of uh, collected in a fairly easy to access way so all of these systems they could now connect to those data sources and then we created a platform so we sort of created our own wrapper platform around like an internal system as we called it uh, internal platform and then we looked at all the different departments what they were doing in their different third-party systems and started looking at okay these are, this is the essence of the feature functionality that we need to have internally in order for you to do your job and we started moving in segments we started moving like we modularized and created a monorepo solution uh, within like a very f like small front-end application that was just connecting to these back-end systems right and so uh, each department kind of got their own area if that makes sense of this uh, front-end application and after a little while uh, most of the work was happening through one system and they didn't have to sync things between systems or jump between tabs in different types of company systems and so forth they could just work within one system and that in alone created a lot of imp uh, improvements in terms of like how long it took them to do their job and the, they were happier etc etc and then finally we real that this also led to a big a greater uh, we, f we started seeing a pattern emerge where we could actually start to automate some of this stuff because we owned all of the internal data that was necessary to do the job. So that was, I don't know if that was three minutes, but it's probably around three minutes. And so by uh, I hope that you sort of followed along how I built that up, where we start by talking about what was the problem and then we describe sort of the process of solving that problem and then we talk about like how the overall architecture was going to look and what the benefits were with having that solution because it's always important to understand that architecture and like designs of systems and so forth there are so many ways guys to do it and there are always pros and there are cons so by talking from experience and then sort of reflecting a little bit on what like what why that approach was very appropriate for this moment is actually a very good way for you to communicate the motivation behind why you picked a certain architecture and your understanding of the benefits of that architecture and then the, the interviewer might ask you like counter questions and you can respond appropriately right but this is a very good platform to just kind of, or like almost a blueprint for how to structure this answer so that further conversations can be held so what I want you to take away from this is that usually I at least what I believe is that when you're asked to like explain an architecture or the system design that you've gone with for some reason it's usually a matter of I mean the the, ti the timeline is just so that you don't take forever to explain it becomes guys it, it, there are some people where if you have an interview that is an hour they will burn 30 minutes on the first question and you might have 10 questions that you need to ask in order to assess their skill level so they try, can, might want to time box it a little bit so the answer doesn't go like ballistic but the same format is usually very useful to use when you explain architecture type of questions start by explaining 
from experience a problem that you had at some point it doesn't have to be this high level at a company level i've had others you know questions related to things like that where you know it was at the code level like architecture in the actual code and not at the system to system level which is but the same thing applies start by explaining what the problem was and giving some context to that problem start by and then follow up by explaining that we were trying to optimize for this this was the thing that was important to like address and then explain sort of how you structure things to optimize for that specific solution and then be very transparent about that these were things that went really well these might have been things that could have been improved but overall this is sort of the outcome of this the learnings the lessons that you got from this architecture this is a very good platform if you want to answer this question in a fairly satisfying way for the interviewer have a great day